do not necessarily reflect or represent those of the owners, management, or advertisers of Pacific Telestations, Inc. This message has been brought to you by the stations of KUAM. You're watching Buzz with Jess Luha. Good evening, Guam. I'm Jess Luhan. Welcome to this edition of The Buzz. Excited show tonight. Actually, we're going to be wrapping some things up. I didn't think it was going to be this far out of the election to wrap it up. But hey, good evening then again. Doc, how are you doing this evening? Very good. Thank you. Uh, you know, know, Knowing that uh, election rules have changed, uh, you know, of course, uh, over the past, past couple years, but uh, we just got certification. You know, people are saying, hey, still talking election? But elections just got certified last Saturday. Sure, <laughs> sure. You know, on the onset, we uh, we talked about pollings and who might be in, who might be out, what the composition was going to be. You said from the very beginning, everybody that's there will probably be there. One or two may change. That's what happened. Yes. It looks like what happened. Anyway, let, let's go back sure. to, to, to the beginning and to where we're at right now. Okay, <laughs> good. Yeah, uh, pretty much we have a do we have a legislature dominated by incumbents, and uh, I jokingly call the former incumbents retreads. Those mm -hmm. are usually people that get the consolation prize for running for another office, mm -hmm. and then they come back in. Espadon and Blas fit into that category, and and we have very active change. Actually, the pu what the public doesn't really mm -hmm. see a lot mm -hmm. is Compared to 10 years ago, only about five of our current senators mm -hmm. were in the legislature 10 years ago. Sure, so sure. we have a lot of turnover in our legislature. Mm -hmm. It's just the turnover happens very slowly mm -hmm. and it doesn't happen on a really active basis. And so we have two new uh, faces. We have Narissa Underwood mm -hmm. and Mary Torres. I'm sure they're going to bring a lot of sure. new ideas. I'm always happy to see women get elected to the legislature. Uh, women bring a, 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 an interesting dynamic into the legislature and they, they speak particularly, if they're speaking about women's related issues, in particular the women's side of issues, mm -hmm. it's a very, very important part of our process. And so I'm always pleased to see uh, female candidates successful in our legislature. Well, I, I remember I'm serving the legislature, I think uh, it was 27th, 28th, where we had uh, probably the highest number of, of women serving, you know? And regardless of what party you're, you're, you're affiliated with, when you came close to a women's issue, we went, oh man, they're, they're going to come at us. <laughs> they're going to come at us. But, but it's great. We're, we have actually, we, we lost one, uh, uh, we'll be losing actually one uh, um, a female senator, and of course, uh, Senator y y Yamashita. But we're, we're having two more come in, so we're going to have, that number is going to jump up again in regards to the number of women that are going to be serving in the legislature. That's right. What, what, what do you see in regards to, uh, to, to again, this, uh, this situation here? The, here now, now, this, pro Proposal 14A, pass, okay? Yeah. Do you think there's going to be another, um, probably another run at uh, maybe the same sex uh, uh, issue here down the line? You know, I, I got to tell you, uh, people can say what they want to say and, and do what they want to do. It's rare to see a senator with real guts, and Senator B.J. Cruz raised the issue. He put himself out there to, to have raised the issue several years mm -hmm. ago, before the whole national mm -hmm. trend and debate. You know what? Same-sex marriage, I think people should just get over it. I think under the current law, mm -hmm. same-sex people can get married now, now. under mm -hmm. the current law. Sure. But, you know, we have to certainly have a, a policy discussion. It's mm -hmm. the national trend. And personally, and I have uh, wonderful gay people in my family, gay people should have the right to be just as unhappy as everybody else. <laughs> and, and, and that's the reality. I mean, come on. And, and, and hire divorce attorneys that's like everybody, right. like all married people, right? <laughs> I had a very close family member. She got married uh, five years ago, and then four years ago she had one of the most knockdown, drag out divorces you could ever see, and more power to yeah. everybody. Yeah. But, but but again, going back, do, do you think uh, do you think we're we're getting there? Because of course, uh, the recre recreational marijuana basically was was thought of. Um, Senator Respicio a, a few years back kind of brought that up. The the 420, you know, the, all that. But now, of course, it's just the the medicinal marijuana aspect, just the medicinal marijuana. But that being said, uh, you know, it was controversial as well. So do you think, again, 
when do you foresee same-sex coming up again? Oh, I think same-sex marriage is a mm -hmm. civil right. Yeah. I think that uh, gay people should have the same rights as everybody mm -hmm. else. They should be treated equally, treated the same, uh, not be uh, prejudiced against for their mm -hmm. sexual mm -hmm. orientation, and, and in general, live and let live. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that that's going to be the national policy, and that's going to be Guam's policy. I don't think it's a referendum. I don't think sure, it's anything sure. other than us complying mm -hmm. with national law. And, and, and national concepts. On the medical marijuana, yeah, we passed medical marijuana, but we have a, a, a crazy bureaucracy to deal with now to approve medical marijuana. Mm -hmm. I think the legislature should go back and make a simple process, throw all of the doctors out of the medical marijuana side of the house and ha maybe have one doctor and really bring in people who are either cancer survivors or cancer patients who have a very compassionate view on how to handle medical marijuana. Mm -hmm. One other thing about medical marijuana, I tell my criminal justice students, I don't care if it's legal or not legal, anyone engaging in recreational marijuana or recreational drugs in general, you know, you're, you're out of the law enforcement business. And so mm -hmm. while I'm very compassionate toward medical marijuana, sure, sure, as I, I, am. I mm -hmm, think mm -hmm. that we, we need to be realistic and, and not say that it's a panacea and anybody can use it anytime that's right, that's for right. any reason. Mm -hmm. I just don't think that they've designed the bureaucracy prospectively mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in a way to really facilitate the policy. I strongly encourage the senators, now that they know the number of people that, that people sure. actually support it, make the bureaucracy streamlined, uh, put a farm at UOG or, or whatever and grow it, however they want to do it, uh, do it and make it happen. And I think that the public would support that, particularly if it's going to sick people and it's done for compassionate mm -hmm. reasons. Now, go back uh, again, 20, 2014, um, other than the proposal, uh, the gubernatorial, gubernatorial election. Um, you, you polled since the, the very beginning. Um, you did some polling initially during the, the of course, the, um, the, the primary, mm -hmm. but that was said and done. The um, uh, brand new election, going into that, um, you, you, you said that, uh, that uh, Guterres will probably now gain a, a, a bigger footing in this mm -hmm. thing now, a, a bigger, bigger surge in this thing. Sure. Uh, what happened? What happened? Yeah. That was my question. <laughs> and, you know, I learned something new every election, and certainly in this election what didn't happen was at least 10% of the total voters that mm -hmm. were Democrats did not vote in this mm -hmm. election. They, they sat out mm -hmm. and they didn't vote. And the other thing that happened was that uh, uh, basically the, the usually a, a solid Democrat candidate, and that would be Guterres in this mm -hmm. case, would usually garner 42%. That's the average, that's the minimum. The average uh, 42 minimum, and that's for both sides, Republican mm -hmm. or Democrat. Most Democrats garner about 45%. And so that's what the number should have been. Mm -hmm. And we were looking at very closely why the number wasn't that. And what didn't happen was over that long weekend, the Friday to Tuesday mm -hmm, long mm -hmm. weekend, what didn't happen were people didn't come do the homecoming thing with the Democrat side and mm -hmm. say, let's throw aside all of our, our conflicts and get together as Democrats. I'm going to tell you, Republicans on Guam are very good about mm -hmm. this. After a primary, they kiss and make up, mm -hmm. and they hate each other before the primary. After the primary, they get together, mm -hmm. and they don't, they don't switch to the other side. Mm -hmm. Democrats, on the other hand, they hold grudges within the party against each other. And these long time. Long time grudges. And these factions, I think that this was a payback election for 2002 and 2006. This is where the, the stars aligned. Huh? Right, <laughs> where it, they didn't have any, uh, Gutierrez didn't have a solid... Berdalio Underwood Democrat mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. keep that side aligned very much. And so essentially what happened was that side was aligned toward the Republicans mm -hmm. and the Republicans took advantage of mm -hmm. it. That's just good politicking. That's mm -hmm. just good electioneering. And you know, it was a that's the strongest margin I've seen. Mm -hmm. On Guam, usually the highest I've ever seen is fifty eight percent. So sixty four percent is extremely high. Mm -hmm. And all the quacking that's going on right now about what went on at the election and all this quacking about the, the ballot and the cooler and junk like that, you look at it, you determine whether it's real or not, and then you move on. And that's what everybody needs to really understand in here. Uh, there's a point when this election needs to be over, it needs to be put in the ground and buried, and we need to get on with life because the election's over. And, and really, uh, I think that ballot was just a, somebody brought in their newspaper that had mm -hmm. the markings mm -hmm. on it, and then the 
election employee, put it in the cooler to ki keep it mm -hmm. out of the eyes of anybody else. And then the other, the other uh, employee wanted a soft drink and opened the cooler, and my God, there's a ballot. That's what I thought myself. That's because what I, think I Because I, I, I think, I, and I'm sure this probably has happened at, at, at other um, uh, at precincts as well, where people will bring in maybe a sample ballot or names, right? right. And they would put it down and write the, and, and, and mark in the ballots. And at times, I'm sure they've forgotten it. Forgotten it? It, it, it falls it, on the floor? Yeah, all it, kinds of and things. And it doesn't mean that the precinct officials had something to do with it. Right. You know, and, but when you see it, the first thing we think of is, uh, you know, stuffing ballots, conspiracy theories, and, 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 th and things of that nature, right? Yeah, I think this was <laughs> another form of garbage. They just didn't know where mm -hmm. to put it because it was a, a marked practice ballot. And mm -hmm. so they put it in the cooler to keep it out of the garbage so nobody would see it. Mm -hmm. and, and I think also what, what probably happened in this case was the precinct official who saw it just mentioned it to somebody after the election's over as an afterthought, oh yeah, I saw this, and then... By the way, I saw it, yeah. And mm -hmm. then it went mm -hmm. out, and mm -hmm. then people wanted it investigated. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with people wanting things like this sure. investigated. Welcome people to investigate it, because that's it was what it was. And I think what happened is, once she made the complaint, somebody said, oh yeah, by the way, I found that ballot or that mm -hmm. newspaper on the floor, and I put it in the cooler, and then it's like, okay, never mind. And that's probably, I think, plausibly what mm -hmm. happened. And there's nothing wrong with this woman complaining. By the way, uh, I heard on the news earlier, uh, people were talking about attorney Vanessa Williams. Mm -hmm. She's a wonderful mm -hmm. young professional, and I have the highest amount of respect for her. And I know that if she was involved in anything as an attorney, she did it uh, in, in all manners of respect and integrity. And I think that having attorneys check on things also is part mm -hmm. of the process. It's how we work. But, 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 but let me ask you this, because I, I, I talked about this, and, and you know I don't know all the details, but <clears throat> I'm sure when all the details comes out, we can talk about this again. Um, because of the fact that be, because of the fact that she was involved in, in the campaign, and anybody who wants to be involved in the campaign should be involved in the campaign. But the fact that she represents the, 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 the government, in the sense, this, this case, the, the Civil Service Commission, okay, as a, uh, I guess, a conflicts attorney that should have no conflicts with, 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 with anybody, and that she was involved in a camp, um, in this case, the Guterres Comitato camp, that made, that made the issue of the port employees a campaign issue. Um, I don't know whether or not with, when it rang a bell, you know, because sometimes the smartest people and, they, and the smartest people on, on, a, on, on a daily basis make the, the, the craziest mistakes at, at times, whether it rang a bell or not, that, that becomes a campaign issue. So that in itself, because the campaign made the port employees a campaign issue, and I remember Carl Guterres standing up there so, you know, talking about the, the Calvo Tenorio team, saying that when we get in, we're going to bring back all those employees in, in, a, in, a, in a debate. I remember that specifically. And that being said, so you're involved with that team, that in itself has the look, the feel of, of someone that, uh, maybe not biased, but the perception well, of being a team that's biased. Also, it depends on what the person's role was. You know, I could be standing on a street corner and two other people walk by and they take a picture and they say, ah, you know, mm -hmm. there's proof that he was there at that time with these people. Mm -hmm. We don't, as you mentioned, we don't have all the details. Sure, but I do sure. hope and I hope this very soon, that they put all these things to rest mm -hmm. and we get on with reality. And the reality is our elected leaders have a lot of work to do and they're not really good at doing work. <laughs> they're good at giving themselves pay raises, Ooh. but they're not really good about- Retro. Uh, <laughs> retroactive pay raises. They're really good at that. Yeah. But you know, we'll see what else. Well, no, I, 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 I'm glad uh, you know Senator, uh, Senator um, Limtiaco uh, was the only one um, uh, only vote that, that voted against it, uh, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm sure he's, he'll probably donate his, uh, his um, retroactive pay to, to a worthy cause, probably back to the hospital. Maybe you guys at the University of Rome. Yeah, you should start a scholarship. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, that would be great. There, there we go. I tell you what, we got bills to pay. We'll be right back this, uh, of course, Thanksgiving Eve. We'll be right back.